my beautiful body bakers. Oh, my darling, no, oh, my darling, no, oh, my darling Clementine. Guess what we're doing this morning? We are doing Clementine and almond cake. This, by the way, is gluten free. There is no flour because we're going to use some almonds. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because, first of all, we need some vitamin C in our immune system. These are amazing for kids' snacks. And I want something fast and easy. This is ridiculous for kids. Kids out there, you're going to be making this for your parents because it is so darn easy. So I've got four clementines. I'm going to put them into some bubbling or boiling water. Just as is, don't take the pips off because that will create a little hole. We don't want any of the juice coming out. So we've got four. One, two, plop, 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 plop. And we've got that simmering away. I'll trip up a little bit. Twenty minutes to thirty minutes. Now I've done orange cakes in the past, and they take about two hours. To, and I said I'm not doing it for two hours. So I've experimented. Yes, you can do it in the, uh, in the microwave at a pinch. But listen, twenty minutes on the stove on a bubble bubble toilet trouble with your four clementines. That's going to be bubbling away while they're cooking. Now, while they are cooking, I have blitzed the clementines, about four. Now roughly, when you're looking at the size, you'll obviously have one that could be a bit larger and then you've got a little baby clementine. So what I've done is I've weighed out the pulp and the pulp is about 200 grams, 230 grams. So it really doesn't make any difference. About 200 to 230 grams of your clementine pulp. So all we're starting with, I have got 160 grams of caster sugar. I have zested one lemon. Now the reason I'm putting it into the caster sugar is I just want to show me the money. I want to blend the lemon into the sugar because you'll get all that beautiful lemon extract oil into your caster sugar and it'll be divine, divine. Bam, 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 bam. I have got four beautiful eggs in that goes in on top of my caster sugar and my zest of the lime. And the lime is lovely because it does enhance the flavor of the clementines and give it a bit of a punch. So I've got my four eggs, give it a stir, stir, stir. And all I'm doing is I'm whisking this together. So this is literally, can be done in one bowl. I'm just doing two purely to make it that little bit easier for the demo. That's it, you've got your caster sugar, you have got your zest of your lemon, and you've got four beautiful free range eggs. You are now going to add 100 grams or 100 mils of sunflower oil, and in that goes. Blah, 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 blah. So all you can see, it looks like a big fat giant omelet. <laughs> so you've got your egg mix, you've got your sugar, you've got your lemon. Start, 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 nothing else. Now, before we add our pulp, I have got two teaspoons of gluten-free baking powder. Now it's very important when you're using, um, when you are baking with gluten, or when you are baking for gluten-free, is that the bowls you use, the tins you use, everything that I have in regards to your gluten, it's in a separate cupboard because you don't want cross-contamination. You'll even find flour particles will be in the air. So if you're ever doing gluten-free, always start at the very, start in the morning if you're going to do gluten-free baking, and then if you're going to do ordinary baking, do that in the afternoon. So two teaspoons of baking powder, and in goes 175 grams of ground almonds. Clean as you go, clean as you go, kaboom, boom, boom. So we have got our ground almonds, and we have got our baking powder. So Yvonne, this is for you. Now one of the things, if you wanted to make this nut-free, this is a bit of a challenge, in that I have tried it with different nuts. I've tried it with macadamia nuts, because they are the same color. I have tried it with hazelnuts, Hazelnuts work much better, but the only thing I've done is that I've slightly roasted the hazelnuts in the oven and I've taken them out and I've rubbed them between a tea towel to get the skin off. Because with ground almonds, you have the clear um, sort of creamy color and texture, which is perfect for this particular cake. The only challenge I'm finding with the nut free is the next one I'm gonna try is with pine kernels. Don't try sunflower seeds or don't try pumpkin seeds, because I have tried. Makes the orange cake go green and it has a funny texture. So I've tried the pumpkin, stay away from pumpkin, stay away from your, um, your other seeds. The pine kernels could be 
an alternative, but I will let you know because I'm still experimenting. So, we have got our egg mixture, and the next thing in goes are, and I cannot tell you the smell in my kitchen, and when I am pouring this absolutely blitzed clementine. And it is very important, do not peel the clementines when they're cooked. And I will show you what I've done. So I have literally got my eggs, I've got all my gunge, and if you can see if there was smell of vision, lads. So we've got our wet, and I'm now going to add the wet to the dry. So all I'm doing is I am pouring every single last beautiful look at that ray of sunshine on a Sunday morning. And honestly, there's another tip to keep you positive as well. Music. Thanks to Emer Hutchinson. Emer, if you're ever watching, Emer has given me, I don't know, a new spring in my step because she has recommended RTE Gold. Now, I'm not going to mention... If you do put on RTE Gold, you will get music and you'll be bopping around the kitchen, you'll have Phil, you'll have the Bee Gees, then you'll be diving into Dire Straits. It is amazing. RTE Gold, have a listen. So, I have got this glorious, sumptuous orange mix and I would nearly face palm into the batter because it is divine. Now look how wet it is. This is why it's fabulous as a gluten-free cake because the wetter the better, the wetter the better the better, the wetter the better the better. Now I am putting it into a nine inch, which is about 23 centimeter tin. It will bake for 35 to 40 minutes. You can put it into an eight inch, loose bottom is important. You can put it into an eight inch. If you're gonna put it into an eight inch, it can take anything from 50 minutes to an hour at 180. So in it goes into my trusty oven. And I will set that for, I will set it for 30 minutes on my clickety clock because I do not want to mention anyone else's name because I could be setting off alarms all over the country. So that is as quick as boo, 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 clean as you go, clean as you go, boo, boo, boo. Now, how you blitz the clementines. So they're still bubbling away in the pot. And what I've done is I have prepared some earlier. So I have got my clementines. I have taken the little seed bit out once they're cooked and obviously once they're cool to touch. I felt a bit like pimple popper, <laughs> getting rid of the seed at the end of the clementine. So what you're going to do is you're going to put this into your blitzer. Now if you don't have a blitzer, a hand blender will do as well. Um, sorry about the gesture. <laughs> in, that goes into my trusty magic. but it is a bowl of sunshine. A bowl of sunshine. Now, I'm thinking if I decide to do another clementine cake, fantastic, I've got my clementines all pureed. If I don't, I'll put this into a freezer, into a container and put it into the freezer. And I have got my puree, put a little sticker on it, clementine, just in case somebody thinks it's carrot soup, clementine, put the date on it, and it will last for about three to four weeks. Once you take it out of the freezer, let it come to room temperature, give it a whisk, and it'll start to thaw. Once it's thawed, it's ready to rock and roll. Now the cake itself is so beautiful, but it is very rich. It is so squidgy. It is so, mm, can't say the M word. It is beautiful. But you can see small slices are just enough because it's sticky. It has that real punch of orange, but what I love, now this is where Karina Murphy, my super buddy, my cake buddy out there, has got me onto this cork. Cork is fabulous, it's sort of high protein, it's really, really sharp, but what's divine is that if you have your clementine cake and, da, 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 
Kaboom! A dove. And see how thick this cork is. It is thick. And a little blob on the side, maybe a little blob on top. Because each slice, will you get 12 slices out of a 9 inch, uh, 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 12 slices out of a 9 inch round tin. And each slice is 160 calories. And then you've got this high protein cork, which is zero, practically fat free. And then you have a dribble of honey. Boom! Mic drop, another easy peasy orange clementine squeezy cake for your gorgeous little ones to bake. Get your kids involved in the kitchen. That is me signing off. I shall see you next Sunday at 10.